hello everyone welcome to another video in this video we will see what is jvm architecture and how it works when we compile any java class it gets converted to java bytecode which is in the form of dot class extension so that compilation process convert our dot java class to dot class file which is actually uh, understandable by jvm itself java bytecode is a language which jvm understands so unlike other compiled languages that have to compile differently for a different operating system any java program only needs to be converted to java bytecode only once after which it can run on any platform for which jvm is already present so the next component is jre so as its name suggests it's a runtime environment which will be used to execute the bytecode on any operating system JRE consists of multiple components as you can see here. The first component is class loader subsystem. It is used for loading and reading the dot class files or the bytecodes and saving the bytecode in JVM method area from where it will be picked. This class loader subsystem is further divided into three components. Number one is loading. In this section, loading of the class to the memory has happened. Next is linking. It is a process of uh, taking a class or interface and combining it into a runtime state of the Java virtual machine so that it can be executed. And the last one is initialization. Initialization consists of actually executing the linked classes which were linked in the previous step. Next main component is runtime data area which mainly deals with the memory allocations so here you can see we have various different components inside runtime data area first one is heap so heap is a very important concept in java so all the new objects which are created in java are stored in heap then we have a method area jvm has a method area common across all the threads it contains per class elements like uh, we have constant pools, fields or uh, method local data, method code. So all those are available in method area. Then we have another component stack. The JVM stack is used by a thread to store its local variables. So and also the references to the objects which are created in heap are also stored in uh, stack. Next is uh, PC register. So as the name suggests, it's a program counter. It's a register that keeps track of the current instruction executing at any moment. So whenever program execution is happening, at which specific statement the execution is, that uh, detail is stored in PC registers. Native method stack. So a native method stack stores similar data element as of JVM stack, and it is used to help executing the native or non-Java methods, which are written in some other programming languages. Next component we have is execution engine. So execution engine is also uh, having three different components. First one is interpreter. So it is actually responsible for reading and executing the program. It is designed in such a way that it can read source program and translate source code instructions by instructions. Next we have JIT compiler. It's a component of JRE that improves the performance of Java application at the runtime. Then we have garbage collection as well, which is the component of execution engine. Garbage collection is a process by which Java programs perform automatic memory management. So all the objects which are unreferenced and not required, those will be cleaned from the memory by garbage collection. Uh, JNI interface. So it is a native programming interface which allows Java code inside the JVM itself to uh, work with the applications and libraries written in some other programming languages. Those can be C, C++ or any other programming language also. And to support these functionalities, we have native method libraries. These are written in other programming languages and these libraries can be loaded through the JNI. The last component we have is Java API classes. The Java APIs is a set of classes included in the Java development environment itself. And these classes are written using Java language and they run on the JVM itself. 
the Java API includes everything from collection classes or uh, graphical user interface classes as well. These are all the components of uh, JRE and JRE itself will be communicating with the operating system to execute the bytecode. Just like any other software, JVM also consumes the available space present in the host operating system. Here you can see we have this total memory available in any of the server which will have few uh, permanent uh, members like a kernel or system applications. Those programs will be using a part of the host memory itself. In the next video we will cover how memory is managed in Java. Thanks for watching. Please do share your feedback so that I can improve the content. Also please mention if any specific topic you want me to cover. If you like watching the video, please do subscribe and share. Thank you.